Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite fish to catch on a fly rod, Northern Pike. We'll talk about conditions, locations, rigging options, the tackle you need. It's gonna be a great show. I know you're gonna love it. Stay with us. That was awesome. They're extremely strong fish. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. Yeah. Got it. Yeah! No! World record! We talked earlier about having the optimal conditions. Here we've got a perfect example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat music. Sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. In today's show, we're going to learn about fly fishing for northern pike. Pike are present in freshwater throughout North America. They are commonly known as northern, jack, gators, and snakefish. They're directly related to muskellunge, though muskies will usually grow a lot larger than pike. Both muskie and pike are the top predators in any body of water. Usually pike will far outnumber muskies. This has to do with their spawning times. Pike spawn right after ice out in the spring. Muskie, on the other hand, spawn from two to five weeks later. Thus, juvenile pike fry have a size advantage in the first year. Pike fry will heavily predate on juvenile muskie. This explains why pike normally outnumber muskie in most water systems. There are three seasons to angle for northern pike, depending upon your state or provincial regulations. Angling for pike right after ice out is considered by many as unsporting, whether regulations allow this or not. However, angling for post-spawn pike is considered very acceptable, and it is probably one of the best times for anglers to catch pike in both shallow water and when they're feeding heavily. On the black, nice work, Colin. Oh. First cast, first cast, Ben. I only gave it, I think, three short pulses, but uh, the big thing I did was I gave it a lot of um, little twitches. Yeah. And I think sometimes, whether it's brook trout or it's uh, northern pike, they really like to have that fly undulate. Looks Boy, like did he hammer it, though. I love pike fishing on a fly rod. This is so exciting. More people should be doing this. I mean, yeah. it is something a lot of people are missing out on. Warm water. People underestimate it. That's a decent sized one. Yeah. Here, you want my glove? I, I can here. get in here and get them. Okay. All right. The barbless hook should pop right out, which it did. And that's your average size pike in the lake here. All right. All right, my first Alberta. Good work. Northern Pike. Okay, let's get some more. Yeah, let's get some more here. One of the things a lot of people don't understand about Northern Pike is that they go to different places at different times of the year. Everybody automatically goes to weed beds and starts fly fishing for Northern Pike, when in fact they do change locations in the fall, the spring, the summer. Have a look at this information. It'll help you understand where to key in on Northern Pike. We joined Ben Rudmick from Fishtails Fly Shop located in Calgary, Alberta to do some early season pike fishing. Like me, Ben loves fly fishing for pike. It is late May and the ice has been off these prairie ponds for some time. The pike have already spawned and really have the feed bags on. This could be quite an exciting day. Ben, could you explain a little bit about where these pike are and why they're holding where they are? Yeah, for sure. Well, they just finished spawning earlier in the spring after ice out, so they're, they're cruising around in the shallows and in the flats in that warmer water, and they're just on the drop off looking for those bait fish or smaller pike and some leeches to eat. So we'll be waiting at about knee depth, comfortable depth, 
looking for those shallows and those drop-offs where we can make our casts and make our retrieves just in those cruising zones. Okay. Ooh. Scrappy little guys, eh? Yeah, that was a nice one you got there just before. Oh, yeah. there we go. Came out and whacked it. Now, we gotta find that 33 incher. Yeah, These he's guys are hitting here. like this. Get around here. There you go. Now, what's amazing is that people think you have to fly to northern Canada to get this type of fishing. And the fact is, in a lot of prairie pot lakes like this, or ponds, there's some great pike action as well as bass action, and it's a lot of fun in a fly rod. He hoovered that one, didn't he? You did. Those business teeth. Outstanding. There you go. All right, let's get some more. Get some big ones. Pike will relate to specific structure depending upon the time of year and the type of water system you're fishing. It is always a good idea to obtain a hydrographic map of your local water system, if at all possible. Here are some general guidelines on where to look for pike. In the spring, shallow bays and large flats adjacent to deep water are good bets. This applies to both lakes and rivers. Post-spawn pike are usually in these areas trying to put on some weight by predating on bait fish. As water temperatures increase, large pike begin to gravitate towards deeper water. However, they still relate to key structure. In lakes, look for weed beds, especially in areas where there are definable points and breaks. These serve as ambush points. Bulrushes, milfoil, and lily pad areas are good places to key in on. Points, underwater saddles between land, and submerged islands are all good places to find pike. In rivers, look for ambush points where pike can stay out of the current. Slack water adjacent to boulders, riffles, and fallen logs are all good locations for northern pike. In the fall, pike get a little tougher to locate, and they tend to be in deeper water. You have to get your flies down fairly deep in the water column as you fish ledges and drop-offs and any structure that relates to deeper water. Is this your first big pike, Marla? Yeah. This is my first big pike. This is this is unbelievable. This thing fights harder than a striper. I don't think this is 20 pounds, but it's it's not small. Let him run. Where the anchor? Where he is? Can you lift anchor? Or is yeah, that no, bad? Okay, Wally, you got the net ready? Okay, he's coming when he gets out. Control? He's coming out. He's coming out. He's coming out. Oh, I feel like I got a shark on or something. This is unbelievable. We need a bigger boat. <laughs> I think I sprained my finger. Told you, when you get these pike and they're Man. decent size, they're a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. They're also They're great. underrated by fly fishers and they shouldn't. This, this one might only be 10 or 12 pounds. And yet, it's really like, just as wonderful, isn't it? Oh, it's unbelievable. Now that was a big orange uh, strip leech right. that you were using, right? right? With the wire leader? Yep. Oh, you got to have a wire leader. Forget about it if you don't. That's it's like fishing for blues. you got to have that leader. Because they got those teeth. Be careful. This guy wants to take me downtown, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, my God. I need a fighting chair. Okay, let's see if we can get him back. I'm working on it right now. He's using the current. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's close. He's close. Oh, God. Let him run. 
I don't want him to break, so I don't want to break this guy off. The test is pretty strong on this. What do you think of that ride? Nice, isn't it nice? I'm enjoying this ride. There is just no way this guy wants to come in. He is not even close to being red. Oh, he just shook his head. You can feel that vibration. It's an eight, nine weight rod. <laughs> you know, when I said I wanted to try your rod, I didn't expect this to happen. <laughs> this should be your fish, Colin. Oh, look at that Whoa. fish. It's a big one. Oh. That's a 15 pounder. Oh my lord. Woo wee. Well, you ready with the net? I think bring him up heads first. I will do my best to bring him straight up, all right, Wally? I'm okay. going to fight this like I'd fight any any uh, saltwater fish. Just keep his nose up. <gasps> oh, look at that fish. Look at him. Oh my gosh. He is so big. Ow. Wow. Get your fingers too close to the Wow. Room. No, the line almost. Uh, yeah, you gotta wow. watch it get a line watch burn. Wow. Line now, that's burn. a full sinking line. And uh, as I recall, what I put on there for you was uh, about six foot of 20 pound monofilament, and you got a 15 pound gel wire of about uh, two feet long. Yeah, he's got a current that's adding some poundage to all that. Oh, yeah. He's coming in. I'll try to keep him to the side of the boat, Wally. Okay, see where my line is? See it? See the fish? I'm going to bring his nose right up. Get right underneath him. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, man! Oh, man is right! I'm going to let you do the honors, Wally. He's on another one. This is probably the biggest fish I think I've ever caught on a fly rod. Okay, bring him into the boat. Bring him into the boat. Yeah. He's just too big. Yeah. Oh, oh that's oh, a good 15 pounder. Oh, oh, oh. One of the great things about fly fishing for northern pike are the patterns you have available to you. Northern pike generally will take surface flies or subsurface flies depending upon the time of year and the conditions. We all love to catch pike on surface flies but unfortunately it's like dry fly fishing for trout. A lot of the times it's not going to work because of the time of year and where the pike are in the water column. So what you've got to do is keep versatile. Have a look at this information. It'll describe some of the fly patterns available to you that you can key in based upon your local conditions and time of year. Fly fishing for pike requires special flies that will incite a strike. The challenge for fly fishers is using the right pattern and equipment to efficiently cast. Large pike flies made of deer hair and feathers are good options when pike are shallow. There is nothing as exciting as a surface take by a large pike. Dalberg divers are particularly popular on size 3 aught to one aught hooks. Sometimes smaller surface flies are required in shallow water, especially using patterns which imitate frogs or mice. Fishing deep using intermediate fly lines or even full sink and sink tip lines combined with streamer patterns will usually result in violent strikes. Streamers imitate bait fish and other prey which pike feed on. Patterns incorporating rabbit fur, such as bunny leeches and large zonkers, are always excellent. The key with your patterns is versatility based on conditions. Pike are all business. They're at the top of the food chain and are designed to easily capture prey items. They use their razor-sharp teeth to penetrate the skin of bait fish. Often pike will strike more than once at your fly. They're exceptionally aggressive, 
particularly on topwater patterns. Pike will slash its surface flies, so anglers need to use wire tippets. There are a variety of wire tippets available on the market today. Most are easy to use with heavy mono leaders. In order to have the most versatility for pike fly fishing, it is considered ideal to possess a range of fly lines. These fly lines will allow you to fish the entire water column as you search for active pike. Most pike fly fishers use 8 to 10 weight rods, with 9 weight being the most popular. Fly lines you should consider in addition to a floating line include an intermediate, sink tip, and full sinking lines. I prefer full sinking lines in 250 to 500 grain as they're easy to cast and sink evenly down with your fly. For floating lines, there are pike lines designed with special tapers developed to turn over large flies. The speed of your retrieve can be critical when searching for active fish. I always like to start with fairly active or fast retrieves to find out how aggressive the pike are. If I don't get any strikes or even follows, then I dramatically slow down my retrieve and put a lot more pauses in until I find the right combination that works. Experimentation is key to your retrieves. I had the opportunity to fish for pike at Eagle Lake Lodge. Joining me were two anglers from Tennessee who were at the lodge for big brook trout, but like me, had a passion for catching big pike on a fly. Even though we were in Labrador, conditions can be impacted by weather. A major cold front had come through which had really slowed down the pike. We had to work hard to find them. All right, so I was just casting. There's a bit of a drop right here. There's current on our left. Angela and Tim are fishing too. And I put on this big strip leech. This is about eight inches long. That's not a bad pike. It's not huge. Um, and I was doing real slow retrieves. I felt a bump, thought I had a snag, and then pulled it fast twice and then whack. This guy just smacked it. Now I should get him on the reel. But now I'm using a nine weight rod with a 10 weight weight forward pike and musky line which is really working well. Oh, I love these fish. They're so exciting. And they're so strong, especially in this cold water. It's about 58, 59 degrees here in the water. And this air temperature's in the low 60s. Feels like it's just about to rain. And I've used a chartreuse strip leech. It's about seven. Oh, nice jump, nice jump. It's a nice fish. I've got wire leader on here, about eight inches, attached to 25 pound test leader. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right, nice fish. Got him in the corner of the mouth, trying to go between my legs. No, you're not. Okay. This is why, if you haven't tried pike fishing or musky fishing, this is so exciting, especially being sight fish for it. Unfortunately, the water's a little dirty today, so it's hard to, look at that. That's the last thing a lot of brook trout saw before they got whacked. It's not a real big fish, but it's nice. It's a lot bigger in here. Ah, up to 25 pounds in this system. A lot of 10, 12 pounders. I'd say this one's probably maybe around eight. Now, of course, fishing got slow, so I left my tailing glove in the boat, but that's okay. Okay, I'll take a run by that rock. We'll just steer him back here. I've got him well hooked. Now, now, I think actually I'm gonna take him inshore a bit, just so I can get at my glove, which is just at the end of the boat. About eight inch chartreuse. Uh, I got them on, Tim. Okay. 
So I want to get this guy safely unhooked. I'm going to just bring him in here a bit. I hooked him about three feet of water, which is pretty common up here at this time of year. Love. Oh, that's a nice fish. And the other thing I'm gonna get, I got it right here. Okay, let's get a hold of this guy here. Let's see how close he's going to get to his tail. Oh, he didn't like that. He's ready to come in though. How's well, that for a nice pike? Okay, I'll do this. Just quickly take it out. I'm gonna have to use this. Let's see, nice fish these are. Got a barbless hook, but okay. Isn't that beautiful? That's probably about eight, ten pounds. Let's get him going here, and there he goes. Beautiful. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed today's show about fly fishing for northern pike. They're one of my favorite species for a number of great reasons. They're aggressive strikers. I mean, they really hammer a fly. They're a lot of fun to catch on a fly rod because they're very visual fish most of the time. And of course, they're great fighters. If you want to learn more about northern pike or about this television series, then go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, Scientific Anglers, Mastering the Sport with Science, Islander Precision Reels,